is great. And look at the little USB joystick ports. <gasps> oh my god. All right, this is it, guys. This is the big one. You see, after Atari forgot to send me an Atari 2600 Plus for review, well, Retro Games Limited have more than made up for it today. They haven't sent me some piddling version of a Commodore 64, or even an Amiga in micro form, or even a fantastic new version of the ZX Spectrum. No, today they've sent me a brand new version, a scale model version of the most iconic games console ever created. It's this. The Atari 400 is their version of this classic UFO design and is being beamed down to us today, only here on Retro. Welcome to the Atari 400. I'm missing an hour. Sure, it was some kind of explanation. Oh, hello, Chip Dippers. Yes, welcome back. Look what's arrived. This is the Atari 400 Mini prototype, ready for review. Now, interesting story. They actually sent this to me and then emailed me to say they sent it by mistake. They confused me with the nine pin guy because we look so similar and asked me to refuse delivery. But like Atari forgot to send me the Atari 2600 Plus, I forgot to refuse delivery on this. So I guess we'll be the ones doing the exclusive review. Let's open it up. See what's inside. Thank you, guys. Oh. <laughs> what is this? Atari 400. Oh, it's a baby Fractic. Atari 400 wrapping paper. That is very cute. I think before I open this up, so you understand how special this is to me, here's my story uh, with the Atari 400 because it was the first computer that I ever personally owned as a kid. And yeah, there's quite a story attached. Hey. Hello. My name's Lady Fractic and I'm on vacation from California. Wow, cool. Wow, cool. Mom. Can you buy me an Atari? No. You see, the game box didn't say for the Atari VCS video computer system or Atari 2600. It simply says for Atari and Sears video game systems. And so we bought an Atari 400 because that is an Atari video game system. Thanks, Atari. Uh, in my first year of owning my very own computer, I spent it playing Asteroids. And that's where the 400 Mini gives us our first bit of good news, because whilst the Parker Brothers cartridge I wanted never came out for the 400, I recently learned of another version that's available to download as a USB stick game that would work on the Mini, which means in a special separate video coming up after we unbox the final version of the 400 Mini, I'm going to finally be able to install The Empire Strikes Back on my Atari 400. I just never would have believed that would be possible. But for now, back to the mission at hand, and here's a quick history of the Atari 400 while we're here. Atari brings the computer age home. Okay, Ma, when's the capital of Nebraska? Oh, oh, come on, come on. I'm trying, I'm trying. Learn geography or get your jump shot on target. With Atari home computers, anything's possible. In fact, they just might be the wisest investment you'll ever make. Watch this. Hey, Mom! Hmm. What's the capital of Delaware? Uh, Dover. I told you she's smart. Atari Home Computers. We brought the computer age home. Pitch. Now in the intro, I was joking about the mini Commodore 64. And this machine's connection to Commodore is much closer than you think. J Minor actually designed the chipset in the Atari 400 and founded the Amiga Corporation. But rather oddly, his ex-employer, Atari, then invested in the Amiga Corporation until Commodore bought the Amiga Corporation for $27 million. Then Jack Trammell, who just quit as the boss of Commodore, bought Atari. I suppose you could kind of call this machine a Commodore A400. And that's exactly what a lot of people have accidentally been calling this the A400 because of the Amiga 500 being called the A500. But no, this is the 400 Mini licensed by Atari. And Atari themselves with their original console released in 1979 
While there are no sales figures available just for the 400 specifically, the 8-bit line, which included the Atari 800 as well, sold up to around 15 million units in total. So not quite comparing to the Commodore 64's approximate 20 million units, which still makes it the best-selling home computer of all time, but the Atari 400 certainly came in close, probably not helped by that keyboard. Anyway, where were we? Sorry, I'm not, not myself for the last hour or so. I'm a bit sore downstairs. Anyway, oh yes, the unboxing. Well, she's not appearing on the channel yet, so I'll open this up on her behalf. This is, all, this is amazing. I don't even want to rip this. Uh, I want to try and preserve this. Gosh, that is the cutest little dinosaur. Look at him. <laughs> Thank you so much. Do not give to children. Save it for a little bit. Just kidding. And another gift for Lady Fractic. Where's my gift? Oh, the Atari 400 is mine. In fact, why don't we open this on the retro show with Lady Fractic present? No pun intended. There's always a pun intended. I'll put it over here for the in the unboxing pile. Oh, the fantastic item from Fan Home. You won't believe what this is. Now for the main event. Surprisingly heavy. Okay, that's the end of that. Ow! Oh. oh. I feel like a pirate. Wow. Is this the Oak Island treasure finally found? Look at this guy. That's amazing. <laughs> Obviously a very special box for us, but had we been unboxing the real item that you'll be able to buy, it would look a lot more like this. Probably without the brass fasteners on the side as well. This is really special. <gasps> oh my God. I thought this was just gonna be a basic gray little bit of plastic. Just look at this thing. Wow. Okay. Let's get you out of there, baby. <gasps> That's amazing. Oh, wow. Okay, now obviously first impressions are incredible. <laughs> this is so cute. Bear in mind, of course, the final version will be the correct color. This is the prototype from their tooling. But yeah, holy sh**. That's great. See, the, the last prototype we got was, was just an unfinished gray slab, but this is, the, this is the real deal, which means we can do a full review today. So let's see here, what's it say? Internal Hardware Property Retro Games Limited, copyright 2024 Atari Interactive. So it is obviously an officially licensed product released in cooperation with Atari, unlike perhaps those uh, previous Commodore items. Manufactured by Richco in Hong Kong, imported by Playon, that's who's actually sent us this by the way. And it takes five volts at one amp, so it is powered by USB-C. Model, prototype, serial number. We got serial number one. Oh, it wasn't drop it. Ah, if I seem like I'm overexcited, I, I am, I am overexcited. Now, they did tell me don't open it, and they do seem to have added some glue to the, uh, the Phillips screw there, but I'm still gonna open it. And bizarrely, the entire innards are filled with just this plastic PCB. So, but apparently it's fully working. So this is obviously some kind of new design of plastic PCB that can still work. I'm only kidding. They did ask me not to show the real innards that I'm looking at on camera, but it does probably look exactly like this. This is the inside of the Amiga 500 Mini, which is their most recent product, and I'm sure they followed a similar pattern for that. We'll find out for sure in a few weeks. And that little joke brought to you by PCB Way, who uh, Retro Games Limited could very well have used to manufacture the Atari 400 Mini. And they could have got those PCBs starting at just five bucks. Because as we all know, PCB stands for Prototype Cabinet Buckles, doesn't it? Well, with that screwed back together, let's take a look what else is in the box. Ooh, this is, oh, that's lovely. Beautiful finish as well. 
Now the final one will have uh, red paint around here like the original. Here's the original Atari joystick and here's their version. And it's not a mini, it's the full, full size, the life size thing. Uh, even my red has worn off here, but of course I've got a red button there. This will be red too. And that rubberized feel. This one is very slightly softer, like four or five percent softer. That could even be with with age. But um, if you shuffle these around and then hand it to me, I, I would be hard pushed, hard pushed to actually find a difference. That's really good. And the nice thing about this, this is their Retro Games Limited's third generation mini product, which means they've had a lot of time to learn from feedback and improve and improve. And this is the original VC64 joystick, which, um, you know, did the job, but uh, it certainly had some room for improvement. But this, that's amazing. That's really good. Really, really good. A win. Some screws there. They didn't say that I couldn't show this. So um, let's just be a little cheeky for a second. You ready for some joy? Yes, look at that. Of course it has that expandable rubber section and the axes that push on it have this little plastic disc which I presume is to just add a bit of softness uh, and, and comfort to that click. There's our little D-pad with the uh, conductive paint on the back there. And same with the fire button. But this one very much hand finished as you might expect. Oh, and we have two buttons on the side here, look. Presumably for menu and, wait a minute, corner buttons. One corner button there. Like a PlayStation. Good job, you guys. That's awesome. Oh, I see. <laughs> that knob fell out. Um, these buttons here mean you can actually push, I think, on there. So they, they will give you some additional functions. Well, better put this all back together before I break it further. But that's, wow, there's a lot going on there. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Have you seen an Atari style joystick with that many functions before? Maybe on the new VCS. That's cool. So let's close this beautiful box. Save that for later. Where'd it go? Anyway, uh, I do just want to have a look here through the power of YouTube. We can take a look at what the original will look like in a few weeks when we see it. So let's fade it in here now. And there it is in all its glory. Now this decal here, that's not functional, just for fun and just for looks. But if you know the Atari 400 keyboard, you know you're not missing much. It was on par with the ZX80. Uh, and really, you know, this wasn't a typing or word processing computer. This was a games console. These buttons here, again, don't really do anything. They are just for fun. You do have a functional power light there, which we'll see in a minute when we go turn it on. Because the power button, of course, is on the back. Same with this pop-up door. And this is where you put your cartridges in the original, but everything we're loading is gonna be through a USB stick. So again, just for looks, just for fun, because that was the thing about the Atari 400, wasn't it? It was the looks of this thing, just how iconic and how gorgeous it is. Now here on our prototype, there is that power button. We do have a micro USB, but on the original, as you can see here, it's gonna be USB-C. Then of course, HDMI out for hopefully some crystal clear video. Again, we'll go take a look in a second. And USB for sticking in your USB uh, dongle or thumb drive to load those games from. And then finally, here's the front of the beast. And these are gonna be our USB connection ports for our joysticks of choice. So uh, you'll be able to, of course, buy four of these or use any USB joystick, presumably. Um, hopefully also the C64 ones work, but you'll be able to plug those in there just like the original. Now one little lucky happenstance that I really like is, of course, if we look at a real Atari 400 joystick controller here, it's got the nine pin Atari plug on it, which of course is bigger than USB. But because this is a shrunken down Atari 400, uh, a shrunken down port 
is USB sized anyway. But with our prototype, we're going to plug it in around the back. There it is, which means it's all ready to play. And so am I. Let's go check it out. But first, let's find out what Baby Fractic and Lady Fractic think of it. Isn't this the cutest baby you've ever seen? What the hell's wrong with you? What the hell's wrong with you? Boot it up and see what we've got. And immediately it feels like an upgrade because my original A400, I mean, uh, Atari, not Amiga 400, never did that. What language? Parlez-vous le français? And we'll do English. I am in the USA, so we're going to go 60 hertz. If you're in the UK, you'll do 50. And it now runs through a test. The test is successful, thank goodness. And here is that home screen. So it's similar to the C64 and the A500 minis. Uh, it shows... Oh, look! <laughs> Just noticed Retro Recipes Exclusive Perifractic Edition. Love it. Uh, it shows the games on the top, and then at the bottom you've got all your options that we can use those various joystick buttons for. Let's start with display options. All right, nice. Uh, 4x3 or Pixel Perfect. Now, it is actually outputting at 720p, but that's still a huge upgrade for an Atari 400. And not only CRT effects, but we've got these lovely frames. Actually, a ton more than I expected. We've got like a cyberpunk things and uh, alien planet things. And yeah, I think we'll go for cyberpunk because I'm playing that again at the moment. <laughs> nice music. Language, we've done. Advanced options, always fun. Okay, so we can change the music volume. And um, oh, the right button doesn't seem to be doing anything. Oh, it's actually fire for down. So <laughs> yeah, up and down is literally up and down, fire and left. Kind of makes sense. Um, so here's our build number. 16th of February, this version was flashed. Very flashy. Don't want to shut down, but we do want to look at some legal blurb. Definitely. And it is nice to see Rockford from Zap64. Um, I'm now the editor of that, if you didn't know. I think I've told everyone on Earth. But uh, Rockford, of course, made famous by Boulder Dash and then adopted legally by Zap64. And various other credits. These amazing people brought this together. Uh, Easter egg pioneered by... All right, Warren. <laughs> I won't spoil the Easter egg for you guys, but uh, yeah, have fun finding it. And then we hit that top button to close and we're back in the menu. Now there are a bunch of games included with this. You get 25 games for free. Uh, well, not free, you have to buy the, the A400 Mini. But um, yeah, familiar faces there. Here I've compiled a list of all of the games that you're actually going to get. So if you want to pause to read this, feel free. There's some really great classics there, including Asteroids, as if I hadn't had enough of that. And you can also download any game off the internet. Sorry, I mean, um, you can use any game that you legally own and just copy it across to a USB thumb drive. Insert it here in the back, it will load up. And then just like on the C64 or the A500, you'll see it appear. And it's compatible with the Atari 800, the XL and the 5200, as I mentioned. So let's try Bruce Lee, or known to his friends as Lee. Maybe he's from Manchester, I don't know. Okay, options, select. Okay, so that, that button goes back to the menu and then the right hand one is gonna be select. So we've got home and selects on the back there. I 
mean, for its day, this was a fantastic game. Uh, if you've ever played International Karate, you'll know exactly what you're doing here. Um, just basically, yeah. It goes on like that. Not the most complex and uh, best show of the hardware, though. Let's try instead Millipede. I think this was the sequel to Centipede. Makes sense. And I forget the, the humor these games had. And I'm using the uh, the corner button here to, and I'm holding it down for auto fire, in case you're wondering how I'm looking like such a pro here. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> forget that I said I was a pro. But yes, if I'd had this option back in the day, this would have been incredible playing um, Asteroids, although I think Asteroids did auto fire anyway. But look at me go! This is great, guys. It does add actually another dimension to these old games that you've played before, when you can actually play them a heck of a lot better. They were always hard back in the day, and now the the challenge is different uh, as an adult. I'm having a great time here. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I was never going to be able to keep up with that, was I? All right, back to the menu. And let's go with... Minor 2049er. This is something we recently saw adopted on the Commodore 64 as an unofficial port, but this of course is the official version. Everyone prepare for Station 1. He looks so happy, doesn't he? And it's again very basic stuff, but that's no reflection on the A400 Mini. This is just the game being emulated perfectly. But we do need something a bit more exciting, I think, to really show this off. And I've heard good things about Yoomp. Have you Yoomp? this game. I've never played this before. Okay, so we've got a sort of rhythmic bouncing ball. Okay, little power-ups that you can bounce on there, which I completely missed. Yeah. Yes, I died. <laughs> um, let's try it. It looks a bit squish. Let's try it in 16x9 mode. Okay, now my balls are symmetrical, which is always good. Look at that. Okay, perfect circle. So I guess I do recommend the pixel perfect setting. This is great. Oh man. I could play this for hours. I hope you don't mind. Just missed it. Okay, that is awesome. Yump. I'm, I've heard good things for very good reason. Wow. And then we can press up here to see help for each game. That gives you, you know, what your various keys do on a game per game basis. And then it says if we hit home and left, we can rewind the gameplay. And home and menu shows the virtual keyboard. Oh, and then we can also save the game. So, um, <laughs> that graphic looks actually like my real Atari 400 does with those game cartridges on the top there. Uh, so I've saved that into slot one. Let's exit out and then try and reload it here. Press uh, fire to load. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Just again like the C64, that's the same system you may be used to. <laughs> now I get to have another excuse to play this a bit more. And now we'll try the rewind gameplay. 
so let's say I've just died there, which I have. I can now rewind. Fast forward a bit. There we go. Rewind to just before I died. Gives me a three, two, one countdown. And now I can not die. <laughs> that is a killer feature, guys. Um, I know some some uh, systems have had that before, but I've never actually used one of them. You can. How is it even doing that? The, the gymnastics that the code must be going through to rewind your actual live gameplay and then uh, start again from an earlier point. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, virtual keyboard, as expected, and it's rather nice. It's designed like the uh, wonderful uh, Atari 400 keyboard. Very evocative and nostalgic design there. But the good news is games that require keys like Star Raiders or Miner 2049er have them already mapped to those extra joystick buttons, or you can map your own to games you download, just like I'm showing here on the A500 Mini. But what we could do is plug in a real keyboard and of course that works as expected as well. So games like Star Raiders that do require keys, you could use the mapped joystick keys or a real keyboard. Nice. I wonder if the system keys work here for Bruce Lee, sorry, Lee. Yes, yeah, so you can actually use option select and start, just like you would on the side of the original Atari. Or you can use the function keys on the real keyboard to do that. That's a nice little touch. And I think it beats paying the extra money that a real keyboard would have cost to put on there. A miniature one that you would probably want to kill yourself if you used it for more than two minutes. Trust me, I owned the real thing, and that was full size. And one final quick thing, if you notice my basic cartridge sitting on the top of my Atari 400 there, you might be wondering if you'd be able to use things like BASIC, and I'm told it'll work like this on the final machine. When you insert that USB stick and access it, like I'm showing here again on the A500, a disk file called the 400 BASIC will be automatically created. Optionally, you can then go into the game settings for that disk file, which incidentally you'll be able to do for any game that you add via USB, and change things like the type of Atari machine that it's running. Then when you launch that so-called game, up will come BASIC. I'm also told it bootstraps DOS, which means yes, you'll be able to save any basic programs that you write back to that same virtual disk file like you would have back in the day. And also like the A500, it'll support playlist files for virtual disk swapping within that one session. Lovely. Well, there we go. We've gone through all the options. We've seen the gameplay. I think all there is to do is tell you my closing thoughts as we close down the 400 Mini. It's not the final thing but it looks amazing. In fact, kind of held up like this, it looks a bit like a uh, uh, an early Sinclair ZX80 or something, doesn't it? It's kind of cool. What do I think about it though? Well, it is a prototype, but we've seen what the box looks like. We've seen like what it'll be like with all the ports, but it's how it operates uh, and how it plays that really is what matters to us. I am blown away. I genuinely am. I think Retro Games Limited have really stepped up their game. <laughs> no pun intended. There's always a pun intended. And I think they've learned from the areas for improvement with the C64 Mini and the Amiga 500 Mini and certainly implemented those with these also, especially with the joystick as well. But little things in the interface that we saw that just feel like this is a way more rounded product. This is actually by far the best prototype I've ever seen. And uh, I'm not just saying that because they gave us the exclusive or because they gave some gifts to Baby Fractic and Lady Fractic. I don't even know what's in the Lady Fractic one. It could be awful. No, I'm saying that because this is, it's just, I don't even need to say anything. Look at it, it's gorgeous. The 400 mini prototype gets five chips out of five. An unprecedented score for an unprecedented product. Maybe I will accept that because this was the first computer I ever owned, I'm slightly biased. Uh, if you disagree strongly and think it should get one chip out of five, send your complaint to BBC Watchdog at BBC Television Centre, Wood Lane in London. Uh, I think they've moved though. You'll have to find the new address. For me though, I think it is time for me to move out of the studio for a minute, go play with the real baby Fractic and leave this baby here on the desk. Until next time, if you want to see more videos like this, I encourage you to subscribe because subscribing is free and you can even support for ad-free early access and twice the content over on Patreon. Thanks for watching, subscribe and support below. And <laughs>
of Retro Recipes. What are you doing here? 